Orangutans belong to one of four genera of hominids, the other three being the gorillas, chimpanzees, bonobos, and humans. They are perhaps most well-known for their orange-colored fur, proportionately longer arms than legs, and arboreal lifestyle. They once inhabited the trees throughout Southeast Asia and parts of South China, but now their populations are restricted to just some small areas of the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. Here, we ask the question, why are there no orangutans in Africa? Although other great apes occupy many regions in Africa, and humans are spread across the entire continent, orangutans do not live there. They split from the other great apes between 19.3 and 15.7 million years ago. Today, there are three extant species, the Sumatran orangutan, the Tapanuli orangutan, and the Bornean orangutan. Whilst the other great apes thrived in Africa, orangutans were more adapted to life in Asia. They are the most tree-dwelling of the great apes, spending almost all of their time in the forest canopy. Their unusually long arms allow them to swing through the branches, and their feet, which can also grasp vegetation just like their hands, give them the unique movement called quadruminous scrambling. To understand where a species originated from, scientists often rely on fossil evidence to fill in the missing gaps. But for orangutans, this evidence is relatively rare. The habitat in which they lived, and still live, is not conducive to fossil preservation. The acidic soils of the rainforest tend to erode bones rather than preserve them. Therefore, the evolutionary history and paleoecology of orangutans is poorly understood. But there have been known ancestors of the orange ape, and even though fossil evidence of these is often sparse, there is enough to understand at least partly where the orangutan came from. Civipithecus was a prehistoric ape that was similar in size to today's orangutans, but behaved more like gorillas, spending much of its time on the ground. It had an orangutan-shaped face, and is thought by some to be a direct ancestor of today's orangutans. Fossil remains have been found in Pakistan and India, where the species Civipithecus indicus was named. Others have claimed to have found Civipithecus fossils as far east as Lufeng in China, and as far west as Turkey in Greece. This is a vast range, and it was during the Miocene that this prehistoric ape roamed the Earth. The climate and vegetation cover was very different across Europe back then. There was a spread of the grasses, and some areas of Europe became more arid. Studying Civipithecus, scientists can tell that it spent most of its time on the ground rather than in the trees. Its teeth consisted of large canines and heavy molars, which suggested that it fed on tough vegetation, such as seeds and savanna grasses. Although today's orangutans are almost entirely arboreal, Civipithecus hadn't developed the physical characteristics for that. Today's orangutans are the only extant species of the Ponghinae subfamily. But besides Civipithecus, there were other Ponghinae during the Miocene and into the Pleistocene. Others included the enormous Gigantopithecus that lived between 2 million and 300,000 years ago. It has been described as some as twice the size of modern-day gorillas, although others have disputed this claim, suggesting that they were more like 40% larger. Even so, Gigantopithecus, along with other members of the subfamily, appears to have been restricted to Asia, living mostly in the rainforests. The larger species lived lower down to the forest floor. Some only ate fruit, and others were more like today's orangutans, and lived high up in the canopy eating vegetation. Some great apes were very much more diverse and occupied much greater geographical areas than those from the Ponghinae subfamily. The restricted range of orangutans and their ancestors made them more prone to suffer from changes to their climate and habitat. With Civipithecus being found across a broad geographical area, from Eastern Europe over to China, it could be the missing link between the African great apes and the Asian great apes. Their fossils that have been found in Turkey and Greece suggest either that they were the first of the great apes to leave Africa and head into Eurasia, or that the great apes never actually originated in Africa. This suggestion has been a hot topic for debate over recent years. Whilst no one disputes the fact that humans originated from Africa, earlier hominids may not have. Recent research by paleoanthropologist David Began from the University of Toronto revealed that hominid fossils found in Turkey suggest that a common ancestor for today's great apes originated in Europe 8 to 9 million years ago. 
Anadoluvius turkai appears to have been a similar size to a male chimpanzee and lived in open savannas and dry forests of the eastern Mediterranean. David Began suggests these ancient apes then migrated into Africa and, much later, gave rise to the African great apes and humans. Critics of this theory say that it is more likely that the European apes were immigrants into Europe from Africa rather than the other way around, because fossils as old as Andaluvius turci haven't yet been found in Africa doesn't mean that they aren't there. Regardless of where the last common ancestor of modern great apes first evolved, how did orangutans end up solely in Asia? This question remains unanswered, but as more evidence comes to light, paleontologists might be able to piece together some of the missing pieces of the orangutan's evolutionary history. What we do know is that orangutans are well adapted and suited to the habitat in which they live today. They are made for life in the trees, and that has taken hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. Between 2 million years ago and 111,000 years ago, orangutans began evolving into smaller individuals. Although today they are considered large, with adult males weighing up to 130 kilograms and 300 pounds, that wasn't always the case. Back then, they were even larger, thought to be twice the size and weight of their modern-day counterparts. During that time, there was a significant change in the Earth's climate. Many other species across Asia, like rhinos and monkeys, were also reducing their body sizes. As the climate became cooler and drier, food sources were more limited and evolution favored smaller organisms. Those that didn't adapt or change died out. That wasn't the only change to happen. Their geographic range also changed. The shift in climate pushed the orangutans southwards. Two million years ago, they were found throughout Java, Sumatra, Borneo, Vietnam, and southern China. Then, as the climate altered, so too did their range. But how did they come to survive on just two Asian islands? When sea levels were much lower and land bridges formed, orangutans were able to cross from mainland Asia to the islands of Sumatra and Borneo. It is not clear when the orangutans on the mainland died out, but climate change, along with the arrival of humans more than 60,000 years ago, were likely to be contributing factors. Today, only those populations remain as they have been wiped out elsewhere, and they are the only non-human great apes currently living in Asia. Occupying such tiny areas on the globe, all three species of orangutan are considered critically endangered. It is estimated that there are a little over 100,000 Bornean orangutans, 14,000 Sumatran orangutans, and just 800 Tapanuli orangutans. The main reason for their sharp and seemingly unstoppable decline is the destruction of their habitat to make way for millions of acres of palm oil plantations. Orangutans cannot survive without their forests. Not only does it provide them with food, but they also live and sleep in the trees. Every night they make nests high up in the branches. They also have an extremely low reproductive rate, which makes coming back from population declines very difficult. Females will give birth to just one baby every three to five years. Furthermore, females aren't sexually mature until they are between 12 and 15 years old and males are between 18 and 20 years. Baby orangutans are also sold on the black market as pets. The mothers are killed and the babies are taken away to make money for the perpetrators. Young orangutans stay with their mothers until they are around 5 years old and won't leave their territory until they are 7. Scientists suggest that, even with billions of dollars thrown at orangutan conservation, these great apes may be extinct within the next few years. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.